Welcome to the fourth week of our series, Rebuilt Faith. We hope to refresh, renew, and rebuild your faith through this six-week series. I am Tom Corcoran, joined by Father Michael White. We are co-authors of the book, Rebuilt Faith. And so we're now in week four of our series, and this week we are talking about engaging in Christian community. So the importance of community, that the church is a community, and while faith is personal, it is not private. We need a community of faith. Um, but Father Michael, you and I kind of talk about in the beginning of the book, that, or beginning of this chapter, that we weren't the biggest on Christian community. It's kind of ironic we're writing about this. So well, why did you have a negative view it's of it? It's totally ironic because we approached faith as a private enterprise. I can remember um, in college going off campus to seek out a mass in a great big empty church down the street so that I didn't have to interact with anybody because, you know, my, my prayer time, my, my mass time was private time. Where did that idea come from or what, what, what formed that view? I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> actually. Okay. I'm not sure. I think for me, it was, you know, talk about this again, Philly Catholic. And I think growing up in the church, to me, church was about doctrine, right? I associated that. Um, so I think I had a really great foundation of the doctrine of the church and what the church taught, but that's kind of more scholastic or scholarly. There wasn't like time for touchy feely. It was you know. about rule keeping and it was about discipline, personal discipline. So it's like when you go to work out, you know, it's alone time. Right. You're very much focused on yourself. You've got your earbuds in and you're just focused on that workout. And that's the way I think I approached faith and the practice of religion. It was a personal discipline. Yes, I think that's, that's Which it one. is, but it's not entirely or wholly that. Exactly, it has its place, but to look at everything as personal discipline is not a healthy view of faith. So yeah, I think the exact, exact same thing was my own personal discipline. I, I think our personalities probably play into that a little bit too. Sure, we're both introverted, and so we tend in that direction. Yeah, so I like to be by myself. Again, for college, same thing. I didn't, like, I, I, all the other friends or students. Same were, college, same church down the street, <laughs> by the way. Different times. Yes, yeah, so I would because I would do the same thing. But other friends wanted to go together. I'm like, I don't want to go with you guys. I want to yeah. go by myself alone. And then they would squeeze us together. And you couldn't sit in the back by yourself, which is what I wanted to do. So that's why I went up the, up the street. They had, like, a campus mess where they all held hands and hugged at the end. Yeah, and yeah. It was, like, not for me. We don't go into all. that stuff. Yeah, but... We changed our view, so we, we, we had a conversion. We've, we went from skeptical on that to kind of embracing community, and here we are encouraging people in small groups and engaging in Christian community. What was the change for you? For me, the change came the day I went to Saddleback Church in Orange County, California, Rick Warren's church. Uh, we went there for a conference, and I just I stepped into an env a church environment that I had never experienced before. They're common enough elsewhere in the country, but I had never experienced it. It was just such a loving environment that I couldn't get enough of it. I just wanted to be a part of it. And probably helpful that we were not from there. So when you step in, you have all this worry and anxiety or what's it like? Are we going to be liked being here? And when you get warmly welcomed, then that helps you appreciate that atmosphere. I was so warmly welcomed coming into the church for the first time that I actually exited out the side door, circled back around and came in again just to see if it would be repeated. Yeah, so that, that's good. That's, that was just a, a, a spirit there to that. I think for me, um, you know, we, we kind of learned from Saddleback about doing small groups and we just started doing them here. We didn't really know why we were doing them. We were just slavishly aping as my wife and me like to say. But then we saw the benefit very early on. I think um, own personal faith of just connecting with other husbands and fathers for me, you know, personally to be able to, to do that and share what's going on in my life. Um, you know, relationships that have formed. Uh, one of my former small group members is you know, godfather to one of my, one of my kids. Um, and then just seeing the relationships in our community. I was just at dinner recently with um, my, uh, a friend of mine or a father of one of my, my son's friends and we were just connecting and then someone from his small group just happened to walk by as we were talking about small groups and they give each other a hug and so they're saying how you doing and just those relationships forming you see how nurturing they, and good they are so that kind of 
changed my view as I've seen the life change in our parish. So in, the, in the, that section on small groups, we talk about six benefits kind of overall through mm-hmm. the course of the, of the week. And so just to re- refresh your memory on that, we talk about um, having friends in faith, encouragement in faith, conversation that leads to conversion, others to help carry our burdens, borrowing faith when we're struggling in faith, and then relationships that support our other relationships. So these are benefits to groups. Which of these, your favorite, what, what, talks, what talks to you the most? Well, I think they're all important and, and vital um, for healthy living. But I think that uh, one or another might be more important given a season of life or stage in, in life. If you're going through some, some crisis, having friends in faith to support you or to believe for you might be really critical. Um, to have friends in faith who are encouraging you through ordinary time mm-hmm. can be extremely Life affirming and life saving. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I think that's a great answer. That it is kind of where we are in our stage. My my favorite, and we, we quote this, in, in, is that Romans one eleven to twelve, which is I long to see you. When Paul says I long to see you, that I might learn from your faith and that you might learn from mine. And it's kind of funny. I remember Carol Passioni, who we used to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, Carol and I came on the same time, and and you hired her and brought her on, and she had that up on her wall. And again, as somebody who was kind of not touchy feely. I'm like, that's a stupid quote. Like, I just like, I want to learn from people that are like saints and great. But then I realized over time, I'm like, how true that is that we can learn from anybody's faith. And that's why, again, it's so important to be community. If you're far along in your faith, you can share with others. But even if you're new, you bring something that the group from Bennett can benefit from. And I've seen that over and over again in my groups. However mature you are in faith, you can still learn from others. And however new to faith you are, you have something to offer others. Yeah, that's the power of small groups, I think. So um, I think we should, you know, as we wrap up, talk about one more point, though, about the saints. We talk about the saints and get a little insider information. We kind of had one last day to write about and wasn't really sure about what else to write about small groups. And so we added this day's reflection on saints. But I'm really glad we did. How do you keep this connection to saints? Who are your favorite saints and what can people take away from this? Well, the saints are part of the church, and they're in fellowship with us. And I like to think of them as a great chorus of cheerleaders who are cheering us on in our own uh, struggle when it comes to daily living. Um, So they're a great asset to us, and I think the Catholic Church very wisely has always emphasized the communion, as it's called, of, of the saints. My favorite saints are the obvious ones for me, my namesakes, Michael and James, um, but also saints that I've known, like Pope John Paul. Well, that's awesome, yeah. Yeah, that's great. You got to meet him. We could do many another times, story. Many, many times, many times. Oh, yes, yeah, so we could do an, much more stories uh, on that. Yeah, I think for me, the greatest thing about the saints is, especially in an age where faith seems to be falling away and probably people start to think, as anybody else following Jesus, we know we have generations and generations of people that are, have followed him. And that I love about the saints is that each, as we study and we get past sometimes the shine that's put on them or they're kind of whitewashed a bit, we see that they had the same struggles we had and yet they served God in their generation. So I, I lo- that's what I love about the saints, the Bible heroes. We really see that they were flawed like us and yet they persevered to serve God in their generation. So one of the things I really look forward to is getting to heaven and meeting some of these people. Yeah, that's a great thought. That's a great thought to end on. And so uh, we hope our conversation helps your conversation. Let me pray for us, and then we'll get a blessing from Father Michael. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have called us into community. And we thank you, God, for the friends, the family, the relationships you have given us that have helped us to follow your son and to know you better. God, we pray that you would help our small groups be communities of faith, that our parishes be communities of faith that encourage and uplift one another to follow your son. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he bless you this day and throughout this series. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. 
Thanks for participating in small groups. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. You can be part of our mission to love God, love others, and make disciples simply by sharing this video. We're so grateful you're part of our community.